Goldman Sachs getting some pushback against their executive pay plan. And a prominent proxy advisory firm, ISS, is telling shareholders to vote no, citing significant disconnect between pay and performance. For more, we're joined by Bloomberg senior banking reporter Sridhar Natarajan. Let's talk about what Glass Lewis in particular is saying and ISS because they both have different uh, conflicting views here, if you will, with what management wants to move forward with over at Goldman Sachs. Two different things, but they also have identified two different problem areas. ISS, for instance, since is backing the proposal that Goldman Sachs needs to separate the role of the CEO and chair at many top US banks. That's usually the same person, but it also highlights some of the challenges Goldman faced over the last year. Glass Lewis not only backs the same proposal, but also is saying that shareholders should vote down the say on pay, what we call the say on pay compensation proposal for the top executives. That is a non-binding vote. A company doesn't necessarily have to care for it, but the reality is a lot of these big banks and their executives pay attention to it because that is a way for shareholders to express dissatisfaction with either the top executives or the company's performance. And that's why it's concerning for Goldman. How much sting, to your point, do these proposals actually have? We've seen similar situations in the past. J.P. Morgan, for example, has faced a proxy advisor really refuting some of the special pay plans, if you will. Do you think that the Glass-Lewis plan will have a difference? It, 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 it can add up over time. Right now, it seems that Goldman has actually righted the ship a little bit. It went through a lot of challenges over the past year. It, it changed its strategy. It tried to undo a lot of its missteps and find the right strategy and gone to a strategy that people appreciate Goldman Sachs for. However, say six months down the line, they are hit with some of the problems. This will come back to the front of everyone's mind because these advisory votes go back to your pre-crisis time when people believed that poorly structured incentive packages were in some ways responsible for the 2008 financial crisis. It was only after the Dodd-Frank Act that after 2010, these actually became a formal part of these annual shareholder meetings where shareholders actually have a say on executive compensation plans. That is why even though it's non-binding, companies, banks, and their management are always trying to ensure that they can get as much approval and support for these plans as possible because they don't want any hint of dissatisfaction out there. What is Goldman saying in response to this? Well, that's the other interesting part here. What did they actually do? Goldman CEO's pay went up 24% to $31 million. $31 million, especially when it comes to its peers and other big bank CEOs, doesn't sound like a lot, relatively speaking. <laughs> However, it was for a year when Goldman's profit plunged by the exact same amount, 24%. So there does seem to be a bit of a disconnect on pay and performance. Goldman's board said that they were actually awarding the CEO for shifting the strategy, for simplifying the strategy. We have spoken to a lot of executives inside the firm who have privately griped that he's being awarded for actually fixing his own mistakes. That is the disconnect here. Also, we should mention as well that Chief Operating Officer John Waldron also saw his pay package jump 28% to $30 million. So it's not like Solomon's pay was uh, outsized compared to some of his uh, top executives. 